Bakersfield, California, famous for hot rods and hot rodders, some whose first home was in Oildale. More on that later. The Fox Theater, famous for performing arts, but if you're in the k and Pro Series West, you perform at Kern County Raceway Park. Admissions window is open. Here come the fans. They are getting ready for some short track racing at Kern County Raceway Park, especially because there's a buzz in town. Harvick is back, and he's going to race here tonight at Kern County Raceway Park for the first time. Welcome, everyone, to California in the k Pro Series West season opener, the Bakersfield 175, presented by Napa Auto Parts. Dave Burns and Brandon McReynolds here with you in the booth. Dylan Welsh will join us on Pit Road in a moment. And Brandon, you've raced here before. How exciting is this to start the season at Kern County? Well, this is the fastest half mile that the West Series goes to, so I think it's going to be great side-by-side -side racing. we got Kevin Harvick in the field, as you mentioned. These drivers are really going to have their work cut out for them tonight. And there's your California geography in relation to Los Angeles, about 113 miles north. And as we said, a great place to start the season. These are the final point standings from last season. Todd Gillen in that mean 16, again the champion. Yeah, Todd Gillen with really strong season last year. We got Derek Krause going into that 16 car this year. I think he's going to be really tough to beat as he won this race last year in the fall. A lot of news to start the season. Here's Dylan Welch. Thanks, Dave. It's the start of a new season on the West Coast for the K&N Pro Series drivers, and with that comes a lot of excitement. Of course, Bakersfield native and Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series star Kevin Harvick is here tonight, and on the strength of his pleas for more support of short track racing, a fantastic crowd has showed up and is awaiting the start of tonight's race. A big topic of discussion in the garage so far today has been the tires. Bias ply tires last year, radials across the board in the K&N Pro Series this year. What does that mean? Well, it changes the way these cars drive. They're a little bit more snappy, the cars, when they step out, you can't really catch them. You've got to stop the slide and then take off again. They don't fall off as fast or as hard either, so that's another challenge. What kind of challenge is it going to present? Well, that remains to be seen. We've got 175 laps to find out. Dylan makes a really good point. Talking about the tires that the K&N series has gone to and the radials, it's a lot like what they run in the truck series, Xfinity series, and cup series. So it's going to be interesting to see how these young guys adjust to that tire change coming back here and racing at Kern County after running with the bias ply tire. Speaking of coming back, 19 years ago, a 22-year-old from Bakersfield, California, wanted his home track. It was Kevin Harvick. That was at Mesa Marin Raceway, and that was on October 16th. He never won in the Truck Series here. He didn't win in the Winston West slash k and Pro Series West Tour, but he had the victory this night over pole sitter Eric Holmes and celebrated with all those that knew him. Now he is back, and as Dylan talked about, excited to be short track promoting. Kevin Harvick making his return to the Pro Series West for the first time since winning last June at Sonoma. First of all, welcome home to Bakersfield. Job one is done, qualified on the pole. Job two going to be a little tougher. You got some good cars behind you. What's going to be the biggest challenge about keeping this car up front? Well, I think the biggest thing is just trying to figure out how hard you can push the car to keep the tires on it for 175 laps. I think with the radial tires, uh, Good Goodyear's done a great job of what has been very consistent, but we haven't put more than about 70 or 80 laps on them. So we'll see what happens when we get to lap 125, 150, and hopefully we can um, keep the car underneath us and have a good night with our field sport. You were very candid in your comments after Phoenix about the state of short track racing, trying to improve series like this and get them the exposure that they deserve. You're doing your job. What more needs to be done to take the next step and continue to uh, to recreate the buzz of events like this? Well, I think we have to capitalize on the momentum that, we, that we've had over the past couple of weeks. And as you see tonight, all the people showed up in the grandstands. And that, that's really the biggest thing, um, you know, not only for the series, but for the racetracks to be able to pay the sanctioning fee and, and pay the employees. And uh, when you have crowds that support uh, their local track and the local series, you can afford to put the race on. So uh, as long as we can get these guys and gals the exposure that they deserve and keep these sponsors happy uh, with events like this, things will be headed in the right direction. Great ambassador for short track racing, Kevin Harvick, leading us to the green tonight at Kern. Dave, as a fellow racer, it's so cool to see Kevin Harvick coming out here and running at a short track. I know that's huge for his competitors. Now they're going to be able to learn from him, understand what he's doing on, on the racetrack and off the racetrack, giving them a lot of exposure. k and Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by k and High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems, because everyone loves that fast car smell.
Glad you could join us on NBCSN for the Bakersfield 175 presented by Napa Auto Parts on a very fast half mile, Brandon McReynolds. Yeah, Dave, restarts are going to be really important tonight to keep that track position. Two lanes of racing, so it's going to be side-by-side -side action for the fans, but I expect the winner to be right on the bottom. Full field of 23 cars here tonight. Dylan, who do you have your eye on to start? Well, Dave, one of the guys I'm watching is Derek Kraus. He's coming off a really strong Rookie of the Year season last year with Bill McAnally Racing. Saw nine top fives plus a second and a win here in the season finale last year. He's taking over the championship winning car vacated by Todd Gilliland. Derek said he only feels a little bit of pressure taking over this car, but it's more excitement about being in the 16. He'll be a contender tonight and later this year for the championship. That 16 car of Derek Krause, he's got Ty Joyner, his crew chief from last year, working with him. So it's going to be it's interesting to see how that 16 car runs, knowing that David Gillen and, and Chris Lawson and that group that was there last year with Todd Gillen, see how they perform. Qualifying took place earlier today. They had a test day yesterday as well, got some track time. And one of the biggest surprises outside row six there, I see Derek Thorne did not have a good qualifying run for Bruncati. Yeah, I know Derek Thorne has a lot of laps around here. I expect him to be there at the end of the race. I'm sure it won't take him very long to charge his way up through this field. One of three orange-roofed Bob Bruncati Fords. We'll see how he does on the outside of row six starting. There's your front row, Kevin Harvick and Cole Rouse in the 99. Then David Mayhew and Will Rogers. The 2018 Canon Pro Series West season is underway. Kevin Harvick taking the bottom on that initial start. I think that was a really smart move by Kevin, knowing that he's on those fresh tires. The shortest way around this racetrack is going to be the quickest with that new rubber. We'll see how that changes with the restarts that will come up in the future to see if he takes the outside or the inside. We saw Rouse settle into second. Will Rogers in the seven behind him, and David Mayhew gave up that fight early. And then comes the 16 of Derek Krause. That's the car that Dylan Welch talked about. And the nine of Ryan Partridge. Boy, I'm going to have a hard time seeing those tonight, especially with the roof numbers, right? They're sort of made for the, uh, the inside of the track, not the outside. So the fans see it. It looks like a six, but that's really the nine of Partridge. Yeah, I always seem to get those cars mixed up. <laughs> Two really great drivers running for Bob Rucotti. As you mentioned, Ryan Partridge and Derek Thorne. A lot of experience coming into this year for Sunrise Ford. Uh, that, that team's going to be really strong and as the year goes on. It'll be interesting to see how they do this year. I like watching these three, the 43 of Vanderwall, the 59 of Reed Lanfer, and the 19 of Haley Deegan. All young drivers all looking for a spot in this series, and the 22 of Trevor Huddleston. Haley Deegan in that white 19 car. I got to race against her in New Smyrna just a few weeks ago. She qualified right behind me and did a really nice job down there in Florida. It'll be interesting to see her plug her way forward tonight and see what she learns as this race develops. Hey, Dylan, how's Harvick looking? Well, guys, Kevin Harvick certainly looks very good. cockpit just how you like it. Kevin spends pretty much every single weekend yeah. on, on Sundays racing in the Monster Energy Cup Series, and uh, it's important to him to have everything how he likes it visually and that comfortable feeling having his seat angled just the right way, knowing where all his switches and gauges are at. That's really important so he doesn't have any distractions as he comes out here and tries to win this race. So as we look at the 17 of Mayhew under assault from the 16 of Kraus, let's talk about that. That brings up a challenge if we want the Cup Series drivers to race at the local level. It's not always going to be possible if they have 
important things like their seat that won't go in, let's say, a super late model. Yeah, absolutely. And there's not a lot of teams that can accommodate being able to drive all the way back out yeah. to Charlotte and, and, and have Stuart Haas Racing mount a seat or something like that. You know, I, I actually did the tire test out here for Jefferson Pitch Racing in Kevin Harvick's uh, car for that team and had a lot of fun, learned a lot about the tire and really helped prepare me to get ready for New Smyrna. But, um, you know, it's... It, Safety is important to these guys, and they want to be comfortable. They want to know what kind of car they're climbing into, and Jefferson Pitch Racing prepares a, such a great race car, and, and, and obviously it's really important for, for Kevin to have that seat exactly how he likes it. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, logistically, it's almost impossible for these guys to run too many short track races because they race 38, 38 weekends out of the year. Whose seat was in it for the tire test? I actually had to borrow Greg Persley's, and surprisingly, <laughs> I fit in it. I was I was really shocked. Oh, uh, hey, you're doing fine. You're doing fine, young man, for your age. Battle for eighth on the track now. 19 of Deegan, 59 of Lanfer, and there's the six of Derek Thorne. Again, qualifying not exactly what Derek was hoping for, and they had kind of a rough start to their weekend, too. They didn't go to New Smyrna. A number of these cars traveled out there, Brandon, raced with you from the West Series, but Brunkati's group did not. You think that held him back a little bit? Yeah, I think so, Dave. And, and, and one of the things that I feel like also hurt them possibly is I didn't see them at the tire test. Uh, at the tire test for NASCAR and Goodyear, it was myself running for Jefferson Pitts and then uh, had Derek Krauss in the 16 with Bill McAnally racing. So it's it's important to go do these tests and to have your travels worked out, especially with this new tire. That, that front end's gonna load up a little bit differently than it did with a bias ply tire. tell you who's excited to be racing out west that's Haley Deegan in the 19 she ran or attempted to run New Smyrna as you mentioned Brandon but did not finish the race had a mechanical issue and finished 29th dead last didn't get hardly any track time so this is really I mean it's her first it's her second K&N Pro Series start first in the west but really her first with real track time I know she was really devastated with having that mechanical issue in, in New Smyrna. But as I mentioned, I, I think that confidence, you know, she can work her way through this year, build up her confidence, knock off some top 10 runs. I think that's a, a really good goal for Haley to start approaching these races with. Derek Krause getting a look inside of David Mayhew. That is for fourth. The 16 qualified sixth, the 17 of Mayhew, he qualified third, so a little bit of directional shift there. I spoke with Bruce Cook yesterday after the test out here at Kern County. They they were scheduled to run a whole entire day of testing to try to get used to this tire and, and work out some of the bugs on these race cars. Uh, Bruce was really happy with their car. They only got an hour in, so I think that might be hurting them a little bit, just not understanding the long run that they had, um, not being able to do that yesterday in the test. Yeah, they had a big downpour here. That shortened the test day, but Kevin Harvick looks like he learned everything he needed to. Cole Rouse has caught him, though. Can the 99 get by? We'll find out when we come back to Kern County Raceway Park. Back in Bakersfield, California, the west side, the original racing, took place on the east side. This is Kern County Raceway Park, and Kevin Harvick invited everyone to come out and see how good short track racing can be at the k and Pro Series level. He's shown how good it can be for him. Cole Rouse in the 99 and the 16 of Derek Krause have caught him. But they've not been able to get around him yet. Harvick's been dominating this field, but we're seeing Rouse and Krause, which is the hardest That's two hard last to things to put together. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're starting to inch in on Kevin a little bit. He might be saving his tires right here. He's running right on the bottom, probably taking care of that right front tire. He knows with his experience that he has a long ways to go until lap 175. There will be two segment breaks that NASCAR will throw the competition caution for on or about lap 63 and lap 125. They're not stage breaks. There are no points or playoff points awarded, but drivers can come down pit road, fuel the car, adjust the car if they want. They can't take tires, and that's going to be interesting to see. Dylan will tell us more about the driver of the 99. Well, guys, Cole Rouse running in that second spot there. He's a veteran of the k and West Series. Competed two years ago in 2016 as a rookie. Finished eighth in points. Finished third here during that season. Took last year off to run the Cars Super Late Model Championship. Won that championship driving for Kyle Busch Motorsports. He said running with KBM and specifically working with Kyle has changed him completely as a driver. Said Kyle kind of showed him the nuances of how to race. Just when to be patient, when to be aggressive. And overall, 
just made Cole a better race car driver. He's looking good so far, qualified second, putting a lot of pressure on, the, on that four car. Speaking of pressure, Dylan, I know Cole puts a lot of pressure on himself. I'm actually pretty good buddies with him. He's really looking forward to this opportunity, coming in and, and, and taking over that ride that Chris Eggleston had so much success with in that 99 Napa Filters car. Uh, I know he's really excited for his opportunity, and you can see it in his work ethic. And I think he's learned a lot of that work ethic from Kyle Busch. It's really paying off for him right now. We're watching him hang right there with the veteran of Kevin Harvick. Panning back just a little bit, some newer drivers up into the top five. That's the car that has dominated all night long. Kevin Harvick, yes, that Kevin Harvick, the hottest driver really in NASCAR right now, has won three times in a row at the cup level, going for four this weekend at Auto Club Speedway, and decided to take a little time in his hometown of Bakersfield to show off short track racing, k &M Pro Series West style. And crowd certainly is enjoying that so far, especially if they like Kevin. Well, and you bring up a good point, Dave. He, he's out here backing up what he's been talking about. I've, I've listened to him in the media and his media availability, different interviews that he's been doing over the last couple of weeks. He's really trying to help these series, the Canaan West series, especially. I know that really is, is really close to Kevin's heart as he grew up out here in the, on the West Coast. It's, it's awesome to see a cup guy really give back. He doesn't have to come out here. He's got a race coming up on Sunday in, in, in Fontana. Um, you know, he's taking time out of his busy schedule to come out here and give back to the competitors, give back to the fans. And it's really giving these guys a stage. Cole Rouse, Derek Krause, Will Rogers, Derek Thorne, all these guys, an opportunity to show people who they are and, and what their abilities are behind the wheel of a race car. Wheeling the seven, that is Will Rogers, the 23-year-old from Northern California. Behind him, the 29-year-old, Ryan Partridge from SoCal. A good interstate battle right here. Partridge definitely taking the lower lane, working that left front just below Will Rogers in the seven, trying to keep a little bit of clean air on the nose of that car. I know we're only at a half mile, but air is important to keep that fr front end of the car turning, trying to keep the left front poked out. Will taking that little bit of higher line. I know the Jefferson Pitch Racing guys, they've been fighting a tight condition with all four of their cars this weekend. I know they battled with it yesterday in the uh, one-hour test that they got, uh, trying to get to that break to see if they can make some adjustments on that seven car. So it's been all Harvick, except for the fact that in his rearview mirror has been Cole Rouse. Hi, I'm Cole Rouse, driving the number 99 Napa Filters Toyota. Uh, I started off in uh, late models. Uh, when I was 15 years old, now I progressed to uh, NASCAR Canon West and uh, partially the East. Hoping to do some truck races later this year and uh, get ready for next year, hopefully do a full-time truck deal. Toyota put me in a really good spot to go to Kyle Busch Motorsports uh, and race super late models for a full season. Kyle's awesome help, so it's great to have him around. And it's great competition. We'll have the Sunrise Ford guys there this year uh, competing for a championship with us. And of course, our Bill McAnally Racing, my teammates over there, uh, competing for a championship too and wins. I'm Cole Ralph, and that's your NASCAR Next Gen Profile. And Brandon, you can learn from everyone, right? He talked about Kyle Busch, but just seeing Haley there at the end and Derek, who was Rookie of the Year in this series last year, that's all input that Cole Rouse can use to be a champion if he wants. Absolutely. Derek Krause, he was no slouch last year. He uh, had a lot of really good runs, won this race in the fall, as we mentioned earlier. Um, you know, that's that's big for Cole to come back out here on the West Series and, and be able to learn from his teammate, look at his no notebook, share notes, be able to really have conversations after practices to see what they need to do to get better. 63 of 175 complete. That's when series director Chris Wright, and there it is, told us he would probably throw the first segment break, and the competition caution is out. One of two here tonight. And once again, Brandon, you experienced this at New Smyrna. The rules are you can pit if you want to, can't put tires on, but if you do pit, you don't have to compete on pit road, and that's a cost-saving measure. I think what we'll see here is all these cars will be coming down pit road. When you're competing against Kevin Harvick, no matter if you think you're good or not or think you can beat him, you better come down pit road and work on that race car or he'll have something to say about it at the end of the race. Let's see who takes advantage when we come back to Bakersfield. Leaders have been on and off of pit road. Adjustments to their race cars, no fresh tires. They've got to make them last all 175 laps. Kevin Harvick is the leader in the green and white four.
huge jump by Kevin Harvick on that restart. I'm assuming that he took that outside knowing he's on those older tires. It really helps you get that launch off a of turn two. When you're on newer tires, you can roll the bottom so much easier. So it's easier to take that bottom lane and get that initial launch with those rear tires when they're new. But when they're a little older, you got to give yourself a little bit of room. And that really allowed him to accelerate off a of turn two to get that good run down the back straightaway. What I found interesting, Brandon, though, was his teammate behind him, Will Rogers in the seven, didn't get nearly the launch in the outside lane. Experience. Uh -huh. That's experience, I think. Will's, Will's been doing a really good job. I know Kevin Harvick has been a huge advocate, especially after that race in Sonoma last year where those two really duked it out at the end of the race. Will's an unbelievable road course racer, and he's really starting to cut his teeth here on these short tracks and figure this short track style of racing out. Cody Vanderwall moving through to fourth in the 43 car. Fifth is a 16 of Derek Krause. Sixth place to the nine car of Ryan Partridge. And behind him, there is the six of Derek Thorne. So good out here in the West. Very good at this racetrack. Hasn't been in the KM Pro Series for a little while, but a full season slated for Brincati Racing and, and for Derek. We're really seeing this top 10 after this restart is shuffled out. Guys are trying to figure out if they need to get one more spot for that little bit of track position, but for the most part, we still have a long ways to go. 100 laps left in this race. I think everyone, if they're smart, they're gonna be taking care of that right front tire and, and, and trying to get a little bit closer to the end of the race. I think of these as a little bit of pain in the neck races because if you're a fan in the stands, You've got battles happening on either end of the track, Brandon. I always find myself looking back and forth, back and forth, and seeing a lot of great racing. Really good battle right here between David Mayhew and Austin Herzog. They're, uh, they're racing really hard. David Mayhew, a lot like Derek Thorne, has a lot of experience at this racetrack. I know he was really fast yesterday in that test. As I mentioned, talking to his crew chief of Bruce Cook, really struggling with the handling on this long run. Seeing Austin Herzog, that's it's pretty cool to see him working his way up through there, battling with the veteran of David Mayhew, working on that bottom lane. I know Jeff Jefferson and Jerry Pitts have been really impressed with that that young driver. He's been doing a really nice job taking care of that race car and, and battling right there, trying to get inside the top 10. 15 years old is Austin Herzog in the black 77. Does most of his racing at Madeira Speedway. Won there six times last year. The 22 is Trevor Huddleston, a third Bruncati Sunrise Ford car here tonight. He gets by Mayhew as well. So how much does it hurt David to not race in the series full-time, Brandon? Well, I know I've been in the same situation as David Mayhew a lot, not racing that much. It really does hinder you. You're not out there every single week learning how to pass each other, learning and filling out that notebook as you go along throughout the season. David Mayhew is one of the best short track racers in the entire country. I know he has all the talent in the world, but it's it's tough for his team too, especially with this tire change from bias pies to radials. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Jesse Awuji almost got his car corrected down on the front straightaway before a little contact with the inside wall. He was racing pretty hard with Takuma Koga, and then it went wrong. Here's a look at it. Right side of your screen. Awuji looks like he's diving low to get under Koga, and they make contact. Jesse definitely had that run getting down into turn three. That entry's really flat, so it's hard to hang on to the car when you're on the bottom Oof. side, but uh, Takuma pinching him down a little bit there. That's, uh, that's just tough short track racing. Um, maybe a little bit of miscommunication with his spotter. Yep, and here's where I got a little bit excited. He had it saved right here, looking great. Oh. Uh, that's going to be a repair bill. Tough break for Jesse Awuji. He almost had that car saved, but it just snuck down that banking and got into that inside wall. A lot of damage on the front end of that car. So under caution, Travis Milburn will get the free pass, the Idaho driver, and Kevin Harvick, the Bakersfield native. Well, he's led every lap, but there's a restart coming. Bakersfield, California, welcome back not only the KN Pro Series West, but his favorite son, Kevin Harvick, in the green and white number four, who sat on the pole and has led every lap of the race here tonight. It hasn't been without incident. Jesse Awuji spinning in turn number four, gets a little bit of damage on the inside wall. And up front, even though Harvick is led, there's been a serious challenge from Cole Rouse in the 99 and the 16 of Derek Krause. All of the leaders pitted during the first segment break. NASCAR just displayed the caution a few moments ago for the second segment break, and the leader stayed out. Brandon, what do you think? 
at this point in the race, the gloves are going to be off. We got 43 laps to go coming to the line right here. It's going to be interesting to see if the 16 of Derek Cross has anything for Kevin Harvick in that four car. Track position maintained. Harvick, the leader in the green and white four, takes the outside line. Coming back to green at Kern County Raceway. A lot better restart for Derek Cross in the 16. He's able to hang with Kevin Harvick. Working that bottom, gets into him a little bit, side by side, going down the back. Whoa, working the side just a little bit. You see Harvick had to get out of the gas. Here they come down into turn three. More contact. The 16 is sideways. Harvick is sideways. He saves it. And to the lead goes Cole Rouse. Cole Rouse tried to make it three wide going into turn three. I think that spooked the 16 of Derek Krause a little bit, getting into the side of Kevin Harvick in the four car. Oh, my. Hard racing up front. The 16 of Kraus gets into the veteran, the local, the superstar, Kevin Harvick. I can promise you one thing, Dave. I know that Derek Kraus right now, he better hope that Kevin Harvick in the four car doesn't get back to him. Kevin's going to be charging back up through this field. Here's how it happened. Down the backstretch at the restart. That turn three entry is so light. We talked about it earlier. It's hard to get wheel in your car. A lot of guys fight free in. I think it spooked the 16 of Derek Krause when his teammate of Cole Rouse got underneath him, washing up into Kevin Harvick. Tough break for Kevin and his team. They've been dominating this race all night long. Another look at it. You see a little bit of a tire rub there. Don't know if that will come into play later. There's Rouse squeaking through on the bottom. Also the nine of Partridge and the six of Derek Thorne and the seven. And... and all the way back to ninth went Kevin Harvick. And what's going to happen right here, Dave, is he's got a lot of trash on his tires. He might have a flat tire. That lot of contact from the 16 getting into his left rear, getting up in that dust. You can see that dust above the second lane. It's going to take a few laps to get grip back in his tires. All right, put us in the driver's seat for Derek Krause. Rookie of the year last year, one full season of experience, but a young racer. He's just made a little bit of a mistake, Brandon. Yeah, absolutely. It was a costly mistake for him, too. He lost a lot of track position. Obviously, Kevin Harvick came out on the wrong end of it, more so than the 16 to Derek Krause. But, uh, yeah, that's it's it's a tough deal. I know Derek is really excited trying to win a race here in the late going of this, this race, but... Sometimes you gotta you gotta pick your battles wisely. I'm sure Kevin's not gonna be too impressed with how he got run run up the hill right there. No, in the crowd, it was a mixture of of cheers and oh my, they couldn't believe what happened to their their hero. Many of them. Well, and here's the thing. I think when Kevin goes back and watches this race, I don't think he'll mind too much the contact in three and four, seeing that the 99 try to make it three wide. I think when you add in the addition of being run into down in turn one and two, I'm assuming he might have a little bit of issue with getting run over a couple times but I know Derek Krause he's a, he's a good young racer he's he's really fired up trying to win races for his Bill McAnally racing team and that's what he's supposed to do but but uh, definitely a, a little bit of a inexperience on his part you know getting into the side of a guy like Kevin Harvick that Kevin can help you or he can hurt you <laughs> he won't forget that is for sure well, well, well. At the left of your screen there, the black 99. That is Cole Rouse. He accepts the invitation to take the low line and miss all that. Meanwhile, Ryan Partridge in the nine has moved into second. Behind him, teammate Derek Thorne in the sixth. And here comes Derek Krause. I don't think a lot of speed was lost in that 16. Yeah, I'm surprised for as far as him and Kevin Harvick slid up the hill, that 16 car has a lot of speed. He's starting to work that middle groove, get his momentum built up, and, and take away the exit of these cars as he charges back up towards the front of the field. Really good run off of turn four right there. He's, whoa, lap traffic, getting into turn one there. That about got big. That was close. They get through it and still trying the high side. Derek Krause down to the inside, Derek Thorne. And Krause is going to make that pass. Great recovery for those Sunrise Fords, uh, Partridge and Derek Thorne. I mean, for them to start as far as back as they did, we talked about them not getting the testing time that they needed to get ready for this race. Really impressive run by those two guys. Yeah, Partridge had a better qualifying run, fifth for him, but Thorne started all the way back in 12th. And as we mentioned, this is the first race on radials for the West Series. And anyone who didn't race with you, Brandon, at New Smyrna in the East Series is really getting their first taste of the radials in a K&M Pro Car. And we're seeing that experience from the teams really pay off. The 16 of Derek Krause, we mentioned he did the test here. Whoa, big slide from him getting in turn three. He, he's really pushing that car, trying to get everything that he can to run back down his teammate of Cole Rouse in the 99. 
But as I was saying, Dave, these these guys, you know, Derek Krause, he went out to New Smyrna and he got a lot of laps. The 99 at Cole Rouse, he was also there, had a really strong second place run at New Smyrna. And we're seeing that overall speed from Ty Joyner and his Bill, Bill McAnally racing team really pay off. Coming up on a lot of lap traffic here for Partridge. He goes to the high side, and Rich DeLong is there. It is blocked, and Partridge is going to go from second back to fourth, and Derek Krause is going to get right back to second. Derek, he's not afraid to run into anyone out there. I uh, I know he's <laughs> wheeling that 16 car, but uh, he's bouncing off of lap cars, bouncing off the top top three right there. But tough break for Ryan Partridge. Yeah. He, he had nowhere to go. I'm sure he's waiting on Rich DeLong in the 84 to make his mind up as to where he wanted to go. But Derek Krause, he's being ultra racy right here at the end, being really aggressive. But uh, he's definitely marching his way up through the field, so it's working for him. 25 laps to go this time by the start finish line so he doesn't have a lot of time he can see cole rouse he knows exactly who he is he knows exactly what he's running he's his teammate and now he's into second and clear we're really seeing that 16 car come alive right here that long run speed you know he had a race really hard right there with Derek thorne so hopefully he didn't overheat his tires to be able to make a charge to the front to, to go for that win come back to bakersfield and see if Derek kraus can catch his teammate under green with laps winding down at Kern County Raceway Park in Bakersfield, California. The leader is the 99 of Cole Rouse, who shot to the lead when the 16 of Derek Krause got into then-leader Kevin Harvick and provided the opportunity now. Rouse sees a challenge from Krause, who's made up all this ground. Brandon McReynolds, Dave Burns with you, seeing the end of a great one at Kern County two teammates duking it out right here getting all they can we're watching Derek Krause really drive that car down into turn three Cole Rouse is able to get a little bit of better exit but uh the 16 Derek Krause is definitely inching in on his teammate here you see the progress of Kevin Harvick dropped all the way back to ninth on the scoring pylon and is now back up to fourth with that pass on Ryan Partridge Kevin's car is really working that bottom well. I know he's been fighting a little bit of a snug condition all the way through the center, but it's almost like he just lost too much track position. That contact with the 16 of Derek Krause, he just almost is too far behind and not enough laps to run those guys back down. I think he has the speed in his car, just too much distance and too much ground to cover here with only so many laps left. Lap traffic still an issue for the leaders. Bill Kahn in the 18 moves to the high side, but that slowed down leader Rouse just enough for Krause to get to the back bumper. That's a really tough position to call, for Cole Rouse to be in. You know, when you're the leader and you're working your way down towards the end of the race, you got someone breathing down your neck trying to make that pass on you. Whoa, look at that! Derek Krause to the lead on the inside when Cole Rouse gets bottled up in lap traffic. What a tough break for Cole Rouse in that 99 car. He looked like he was keeping that lead in a few car lengths in front of his teammate at Derek Krause. But once again, like we were just talking about, that lap traffic has been really crazy tonight at Kern County for some reason. I don't know why they always tell us in these driver's meetings to keep the lap cars on the bottom. But for whatever reason, they're all going to the top. And that really hurt the leader of Cole Rouse right there in that situation. Yeah, or at least the middle line there was the 84 of Rich DeLong. And choosing to dive down was Derek Krause. And he now has the lead in the 16 and the 99 of Cole Rouse all the way back to third. I know Cole Rouse has to be devastated right now. To lead in this race, coming down to the end, I mean, he was doing everything right, keeping that gap from his teammate, trying to keep the lead. And, man, what, what a shame to see that lap traffic mess him up right there. Here's another look. Leader, 99, Rouse, 16, Kraus gaining on him, and then this move. I mean, the 84 definitely showed that he was going to run that middle. It just looked like it kind of caught Cole Rouse off guard a little bit. But as I mentioned, those lap cars are supposed to go to the bottom. He started inching down, and then he just kind of washed back up into our, the leader of the 99. And, and Cole Rouse having major issues right there, getting up into that dust above that second groove. Oh, as you said, what a tough break for Rouse. And he got all the uh, junk on his tires, then had to collect himself and his race car. There he is back in third, the black and yellow 99. Harvick is fourth, has worked his way back up. But such a huge, two huge turn of events late in this race. Absolutely, David. And, and another one, Derek Thorne. We've talked about him a few times tonight. That experience is paying off. He's sitting right there running second. Who knows, if we can, if we get a late race caution, yep. he might, might have been saving those tires and might be able to jump on the 16 to Derek Krause in a late race going here. We'll see what Thorne can do. A veteran 
2013 West Series champion on the strength of three wins. Has run a lot of laps around Kern County in a super late model. And he can see the checkered flag from here. Under 10 laps to go. Krause now trying to keep that 16 under him. I know talking to Derek Thorne after the test yesterday, he just wasn't able to open that entry into turn one quite as much as some of the faster cars like Derek Krause in the 16. What you have to do as a driver, you almost have to chop your entry and just go straight to that white line to help your car turn. And we've seen Derek Thorne do just that all night long. Well, I hope you didn't get up to get another hot dog from the concession stand at just the wrong time. That would have been the restart after the second competition caution when Derek Krause got into Kevin Harvick and changed everything. And then Krause's march back through here. And then the loss of the lead by Cole Rouse. This has been exciting down to the end. Harvick back up to fourth has done so much for his hometown community of Bakersfield. The 2014 Monster Energy Cup Series champion came back here two years later, opened up a park at the Boys and Girls Club of Kern County with the help of Cal Ripken Sr. And that sponsor, Fields, on his race car, they're the ones who make those playgrounds possible for groups like the Boys and Girls Club. Kevin wanted so bad to come back here and cap it off with a win, Brandon. And I think it's great that Kevin Harvick is out here racing for Jefferson Pitts Racing. I know Todd Talking to Jeff and Jerry, the two owners of that team, they don't have a lot going for them the rest of the year. I think they have a couple guys scheduled to run Sonoma and at Bristol in a couple weeks. But uh, this is huge to have a household name like Kevin Harvick running in his hometown for their team and, and hopefully can keep those guys around for the rest of the year and, and give them some momentum to try to sign some drivers for the rest of the year. See the top three. Derek Krause now, three laps to go to put that 16 in victory lane right where it was here at the end of the 2017 season. It took Derek all season long to get to victory lane. Part of the problem was he had a couple of great teammates to race against, uh, but he finally got there and it was right here at Kern County. And what we saw all, all year last year was Derek Krause have that speed. And as you mentioned, it took him to the very final race, but he's got something figured out at this racetrack that really suits his driving style. I know his team has done a great job preparing those 16 Napa Toyotas. And we saw that every single week with Todd Gillen. Ryan Partridge in that, that orange and blue number nine has run as high as second this evening. Got shuffled out in a lap traffic situation. Now tries to work his way back by Kevin Harvick for fourth, but he's out of time. Final lap of the race. Derek Krause in the 16 car has put it back to the point at the right time, and the white flag is coming out for him. See if he can win two in a row at Kern County. We've seen that lap traffic all night long be an issue for the leader. I know Derek Krause has to be thinking going down the back straightaway, just no issues going through turns three and four. Doesn't look like Thorne is close enough. Derek over Derek and the rest of the field. Derek Krause back to victory lane in Bakersfield. And the caution out at the same time as the checkers, that's Will Rogers spun in turn four. The seven car who was having a... He was having an okay night. We got a report from Dylan Welch that he was having brake trouble in the seven car and just got it wrong at the very final lap there. Wasn't sure if there was contact or not, but that's why the caution came out. Didn't matter for Derek Krause, who now takes that 16 car back to victory lane and on its way to another championship. Brandon, could it be? I would not be surprised. Ty Joyner and that whole entire Napa team, they have that 16 car right where Todd Gillen and his group from last year left off. Todd, of course, moved on to the Camping World Truck Series this year. Um, comes back occasionally to race in K&M Pro Series. Oh, by the way, taking the checkered at New Smyrna in the E-Series a few weeks back. But now it's up to Derek Krause to once again make the 16 grand, and he's certainly starting off well in 2018. That 16 was really fast, Dave, but I, I would have loved to have seen what Cole Rouse in that 99, his Ooh, teammate, yeah. could have done at the end of the race, if he could have held on to that lead and also to see if Kevin Harvick would have gotten a caution, <laughs> to see what would have happened with him in the 16 car at the end. Oh, if we could have, we would have, but we didn't because Krause used the bumper and saved his race car and brought it home to victory lane before them all. Pro Series Racing on NBCSN is brought to you by K&N High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems because everyone loves that fast car smell. Beautiful night in Bakersfield for the 175 presented by Napa Auto Parts. And by golly, the Napa Auto Parts car is in victory lane again. It always seems to work out that way. That's a good thing for Derek Krause, Dylan. He won the season finale here last year. He'll start 2018 off with a win as well. Derek Krause, the winner.
here at the Kern County Raceway. And Derek getting hugs from the crew. You were really aggressive on restarts. I know you had to be. And, all, and everything was going well, and you got down into turn three. Kind of take us through what happened down there from your your perspective. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad. I mean, it's you got to be – I thought it was three wide. I thought Cole Ross was on the inside of me, and I guess he backed out right away. And it was tight right away in the beginning of the restarts. It always took a little while for it to come in. But, yeah, I feel terrible for it. But, I mean, that's that's racing. you gotta got to push through that. I mean, he's, he's a really good driver. I really wish I could have raced against him. But, I mean, we got it here, and that's really good for us. Even after that, you had to drive back through the field. Where do you feel like you were beating everybody else or you were better than everybody else? I really think these guys these guys here at BMR work their tails off, and that, that, that shows when they're in the shop from 6.30 in the morning till 9 at night when they're supposed to leave at 5. So it shows a lot. My number 16, that brought up our Toyota Camry, was really good on the longer runs, and I think that's where I got him. Like Cole, Cole's car got tighter as the run went on. Mine, I think, just stayed the same the whole race, and I, that's what I really liked, and that's what I really liked about the car. This car has won the championship the last two years. Derek Kraus off to a good start to make it three. He's your winner, the k &N Pro Series West opener. Derek mentioned it right there. That preparation from that Napa team, it shows week in and week out that that's what it's all about. It's all about those people being in the shop, giving it their all, and the results, they speak for themselves. Two cars in the top five for McAnally, three cars in the top six for Bruncati. And you see Will Rogers all the way back to 16th with that spin on the last lap. Tough end of the day for him. Meanwhile, second place, a strong run, but not the one he was hoping for tonight in Bakersfield. Back down to Dillon. Second place, Derek Thorne comes home with a good run. And uh, if I think if we'd have told you earlier in the day that you'd come home second, you'd have probably laughed in our <laughs> face because you guys were not very happy with how it rained earlier. What would you find? Uh, we didn't. It's just these guys never gave up. And uh, from qualifying to race, the car was just a completely different animal and the pace slowed up. And it just didn't like the heat of the day and it didn't like going fast. But it, it was consistent. It was easy to drive. And it rolled the bottom pretty good. And uh, got a couple lucky breaks right there we could have got caught up in. But, you know, we got through. I can't thank Bill Sedgwick enough for not giving up and all these guys in the team, Bob and Marine Bunkai for such an incredible opportunity. And, you know, uh, it's, it's, I say it's, it's not taking advantage of the great days. It's making the most of the days where you struggle. And, and today was one of those days, and I'm really proud of this team for pulling through. Yeah, they certainly did that. Good run. Derek Thorne comes home in the second spot. I know we're always praising Bill McNally Racing, but what's really cool to see with Derek Thorne and his teammate Ryan Partridge, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. If they were struggling tonight and ran as well as they did, they're going to be really strong going into the rest of the year. They'll have to catch Kraus, a five-point lead, heading to the second race of the season. Cole Rouse comes home in the third spot, kind of an up-and-down night for you. Looked promising there for a little bit and then faded at the end. What happened? Oh, uh, yeah, we were good at first, just riding. Um, not really sure what happened with that lap car. Um, people that are that slow probably shouldn't be on the track. Honestly, a little dangerous, too. Um, lap cars were supposed to stay on the bottom. I went to the bottom and he went to the bottom and then I went to the top and then he ran up the ran up the track to the top and then I had to go uh, in the marbles down there so it wasn't uh, great and then after that it was just kind of slick out there and then uh, I think we had a flat right rear too though started sparking with the uh, right rear skirt so but I mean we could have won that race uh, me and Derek were right there together, but I wasn't going as hard as I could. I didn't know if we were going to have another caution. But, um, yeah, that lap car really screwed it up for us tonight. Tough break for Cole Rouse. He comes home in the third spot. Dave, you can tell just the devastation on Cole's face right there. I know that's got to be really aggravating, but that team's going to be strong all year long. I know he's going to really think about this weekend, probably go have a talk with Rich Long about what happened in turn three, but uh, they'll move on and they'll be really good in Tucson in a few weeks. You saw the next Touring Series race, a Wheeland Modified Tour event from Myrtle Beach Speedway to make sure to tune into that March 21st. But it was all about Bakersfield, Kern County Raceway Park, and the homecoming for Kevin Harvick. He sat on the pole, led the most laps, but he couldn't quite get to victory lane tonight tough break for sure for Kevin Harvick there at the end of the race with his Jefferson Pitch Racing team, but I can't thank Kevin Harvick enough for giving back to grassroots racing coming out here and running this West Series race. You bet. I hope we see more of it in the future from Kevin and the other top drivers in NASCAR. Tonight's top driver, Derek Krause in victory lane in Bakersfield.
copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all...